Less time on Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Team Rocket defeated a Wild Cleavor and obtained a Terra Orb as their fleet evolved into an Espatra. Ash and his friends were able to do a Terra Raid against an Enamorous from the Hisui region. Arvin and Ashban protected his parents of Sada and Turo from one of the agents of Quasar named Clive. And Nimona reobtained her turn gym badge by defeating Kofu in the city of Kaskarafa. What brand new adventures awaits our heroes this time? Make sure to stay tuned and subscribe for more episodes. Episode 36 James was training both of his Grass-type Pokémon in order to become more powerful units as members of Team Rocket. However, a group of Wild Paradox Pokémon came their way. This Pokémon was a past version of, B of Amoongus, a Pokémon that James used to have during his Unova Agent days. This was called Brute Bonnet, a Grass and Dark type. Both James Toad School and Capsa Kid were doing their all, however little to no avail, but they were able to muster their strength and evolve at the same time into a powerful Toad Scroll and Scovillain, making sure that these brute bonnets were able to run away, however, they seemed to be frightened, as if they were racing fr from someone else. Team Rocket was able to banish these evildoers, and with that they got two new Pokémon and they are now stronger and more powerful than ever before. And after that, they meet two new grunts by the names of Zerk and Onia. And they thank these powerful trainers as they are also Paradox Busters and they thank their leadership and their help in order to calm down all of these Brute Bonnets. It seems like Team Rocket was able to, you know, be good for once. However, they still seem suspicious of these two new individuals, but then again, only time will tell. Episode 37 this begins the three-part arc in the Asado Desert in the west province of the Paldea region. This is one bonding episode between the girls and the boys as they are traveling through all of the Asado Desert and they meet a lot of Bramblin and Brabblegast and they seem to, you know, get lost in some way or, or, or aspect due to the powerful sandstorms. And this is a great moment of bonding between both Ash and Arvan as well as Miraidon as well as Namona with Penny, as well as with Kuraidon. This is a very small episode, but it's great and important to establish new dynamics within the group. Episode 38 This is a very simple episode where they meet yet another past Paradox Pokémon in the Asado Desert, a past version of Donphan by the name of Great Tusk. Namona is able to battle this Pokémon with her Tauros and even befriend them in some, way, in some ways. Ash is very mesmerized that, you know, he sees the paradox of yet again another Pokémon that he already owned. After that, we see Team Rocket in the horizon trying to, you know, get this paradox Donphan. However, Nemonas Koraidon is able to apprehend the evildoers and blast them off again, and Great Tusk joins Nemonas' team. Nemona is now questioning if she should send this Pokémon to Gita yet or not, However, she decides to stay with him just for a little while longer in order to, you know, acquiesce and sympathize with the situation and creature. Episode 39 This is the finale of the Asado Desert Treeparter, as our heroes see yet again another paradox Pokémon that seems to be a version of Donphan yet again, this one being futuristic and by the name of Iron Threads. It was colossal, giant even. Arvan stated this was perhaps one of the final and last remaining Titan Pokémon of the Paldea region, and with that there might be clues of where the Herba Mystica might have gone. However, this Pokémon is harming a little innocent Wooper, but that's until Rika decides to, you know, join the fray. She sends out her two powerful ground Pokémon in order to protect the Paldean Wooper, and that's where both Torterra and Flygon come into the fray, do doing all of they can to defeat this spherical behemoth and they defeat Iron Treads and they are able to, you know, acquiesce with the kids and talk about the situation yet again. They try to find Iron Treads in the desert and they are able to capture it. Rika does decide to train this Pokémon for the time being before sending her to her boss, Gita, and that's where she's going to leave things for now on. Episode 40 
Our group has now arrived in the city of Porto Marinada, where they see all of the auction shops, as well as lighthouses and plentiful beaches. However, during this, it's when Penny finally re-meets one of her Team Star members, Atticus, the Poison Leader. And Atticus not only has now a group of Graphii from the Tech Trick Thicket where his star base once used to be, however, he's running amok and creating a lot of chaos with his Starmobile all over the city. And this is when Penny decides to, you know, summon her q so that she can prevent people from being poisoned and all of that stuff. Battling Atticus, it's easy, however, trying to apprehend a Starmobile doesn't seem to be an easy task. Not for Namona, Ash or Arvin for that matter, even with their powerful Pokémon. It seems like the River Attached doesn't like to even be attached to the vehicle to begin with, and this is where Team Rocket comes into fray. After dealing with a lot of mechas and being exploded by some of them, they are able to, you know, get Rev of Room free. And with that, Team Rocket helps Penny in defeating this member of Team Star yet again. However, Atticus being a ninja aficionado, he decides to, you know, leave without a trace. Making Penny worried, but she thanks Team Rocket. It seems like the bad guys are not being bad as now to begin with. Episode 41 in the lighthouse nearby Porto Marinada, Ash finally re-meets a Meteo one more time and he decides to settle the score once and for all. A Meteo says that if he really wants to have a rematch as another champion rank trainer, he is going to accept it, however, he's not going to use Serral Edge and uh, Corviknight anymore. He's going to use more powerful Pokémon from his team, and he wants to test not only Ash's skill, but also his armor in battle. And Ash decides to do just that, by sending two powerful Pokémon from his Journey's team of the World Coronation series. The Galarian duo of Surfetch and Dracovish. And with that, a Meteor decides to pay the same coin by sending yet another fossil Pokémon in Kabutops and a dragon to be slayed by the Valiant Knight in Iron Jugulus, a future paradox Pokémon of the pseudo-legendary High Dragon. This double battle, they are giving their all as they can. However, Ash decides to do a combination move. Both Surfetch decides to use Meteor Assault and Dracovish decides to do Dragon Rush. The yellow and blue energy combine into one powerful green energy that Ash now dubbed as Meteor Rush, aka Star Dive. Both his Pokémon go valiantly and brutally against both Iron Jugulus and Kabutops and they are finally able to defeat a Meteor after one loss and one draw. This leaves a Meteor in the strut, but he's somewhat thankful, however he doesn't really say this to Ash, that he was now able to, you know, be beaten in order to improve and to realize that he has not peaked as a trainer, that there's a lot more going on. He's, he's asking Ash if he's going to tell Gita about him having an Iron Jugulus, however Ash retracts for a moment. He does see that the Pokémon really likes to be with the trainer and he, that he should not be responsible to separate it. If anything, he should be the one going to the chairman and basically tell, tell her that he wants to be a buster too. To which he considers. And with that we proceed to the following day with episode 42 where Ash decides to basically play with Pikachu and all of his other Pokémon on the field. And this is where he meets a trainer that he had once met, and that being Lance, the Supreme Elite Four of Kanto and the champion of the Johto region. Someone who reigns over both the Indigo Plateau and Mount Silver. The first champion that Ash has ever met, yet the only one he never really battled to begin with. Lance is here because he knows that Ash is now responsible for Miraidon, a dragon Pokémon from the future. Distant future, that is. The others are seeing Ash having, you know, a dialogue with Lance. And Lance is giving him some advice in terms of how to raise Miraidon and seeing how competitively strong and very versatile in terms of electric types his team is. He does recall that when training with Claire, they were dubbed as the master dragon tamers of both the sea and the sky, and in both elements they need to conquer the storm. 
they need to be one with the lightning and one with the thunder. Ash is very surprised and thankful and he asks Lance if he's only here for that or for what Charles Goodshow had prompted and pitched since the very beginning of his Paldea journey, to which Lance says, that is true, I'm here for a battle, I think it's time we finally have one. I want to test your Maraidon. I know that he's not fully ill or capable, however, however, maybe battling will, you know, kick it up a notch, maybe turn some gears. And with that, Lance sends out his own Paradox Pokemon, that being Raging Bolt, the Brontosaurus Giraffe looking Raikou. Ash is memorized that there are even Paradox versions of legendary Pokemon. This is very amazing and with that Ash and Lance decide to duke it out with both Raging Bolt and uh, Miraidon. And after a great quarrel, the Iron Serpent loses, however they learn from this and they are now deciding to get stronger. He asks Lance how they are even capable of doing it, to which Lance says, well, to the west of here, it's the University. And far ahead, there is a new academy where they are training more powerful trainers. I would suggest for you and your colleagues to go there to at least have a boot camp training. The Blueberry Academy. You guys should go to the Blueberry Academy in order to do some training. And Ash decides that that will be the best way possible. So with that, Ash, Namona, Arvin and Penny are sailing to the universities and leaving Paldea just for a short while in the time being. And with that, that's how this part ends. It's the end of part 6. Next time, it's going to be part 7, the final part for season 1 of my Pokemon Scarlet and Violet series. So trainers, thank you so much for the support. I will see you there. Make sure to stay tuned. Leave a like, share, comment and subscribe. Kuro Blitz out.